Hello everyone and welcome back to our Mommy Chat. And this whole series is about breastfeeding. The last video we talked about what to expect in your first few days of breastfeeding and the challenges that you also face mm -hmm. in those first few days or first few weeks of breastfeeding. Today we are going to be talking about the tools you need for breastfeeding. So now the tools you need for like because we are talking about breastfeeding your child Actually, for six months and not not exclusively for the next maybe one year, two years, whatever mm -hmm. is comfortable with you. But so we're talking about tools that you need overall for this time period of breastfeeding. So, what are the tools that you think? What are the tools that we need okay. for breastfeeding? What, okay. What are the tools that we need for breastfeeding? So because you mentioned the duration of breastfeeding let's quickly just backtrack and start with what is the ideal duration for breastfeeding yeah. so we advocate for exclusive breastfeeding for the first six months of life that means you don't give any so, um, nutri um, nutritional supplement once the baby is breastfeeding everything the baby needs is already in the breast so no water no supplements nothing except of course in some cases when the baby falls ill and you know it's on prescription drugs so that's the only exception to the rule. Now, after six months, by, six, by the sixth month, we expect that the baby has started, um, you know, eating from home. And one of the advantages of breastfeeding, the big deal that we didn't mention was, was the fact that because you, your, your breast is, um, the, the, the breast milk contains constituents of what you have eaten. So as the baby is breastfeeding, the baby is getting the taste of your diet in the breast milk, which also prepares the baby for the normal, normal. adult food when the baby, no, the normal food doesn't have to be added, but the normal food <laughs> when you decide to begin to um, supplement, to add, to add um, table food from what the family eats. So breastfeeding helps the baby to be better prepared you know so then after the first six months of exclusive and then you start giving other feeds you should you can continue breastfeeding for the next two years so don't say that because you've done it for the first six months yeah you're done because the constituents of the breast milk it changes over time as the baby matures as the baby's nutritional need changes the breast milk coming from your the milk coming from your breast also changes in constitution yes to meet the needs so that's why it's very dynamic breast milk is very dynamic now we go to the main topic of the day <laughs> the tools of breast and by the way if you must know my first child i think i breastfed him for about 16 months my second one for about 18 months to 18 to 20 months and then the last baby is 23 months and she i've tried to stop her two or three times now and we are still at it she's going to be too soon so i pray that i'm able to finally wean her off completely by the time she hits us her second birthday so yeah that's me so i'm not just talking from um medical or professional knowledge experiential knowledge too I didn't have that kind of patience. <laughs> I stopped at 12 months. <laughs> it's okay. It's better to breastfeed than nothing at okay, all. Yeah. So, so we'll take it. We'll take it. <laughs> so to go to tools of breastfeeding. So to um, tackle that topic, we'll start with the ABCs of breastfeeding. The A stands for awareness. The B stands for be patient. And the C, comfort. Yeah, the comfort, <laughs> comfort of the mother. So to talk about the awareness, first we want to say that mothers be aware of your baby and your baby's feeding pattern and your baby's um, mannerisms for food you know because it's best to feed the baby before the baby gets hungry so you have a less cranky baby and you have a less um, you have a more peaceful one because when, when babies what do they really need in their first few months of life is to eat and sleep and between yeah and love lots of love and between that to look into your face and look into their environment and to just explore with their eyes but main thing is for them to eat and to sleep so 
please try not to, because as we said before in our previous video, we said that a child would, um, a baby would, um, would nurse or feed about 10 to 12 times in a 24-hour period. And sometimes they take between 10 minutes to 20 minutes. And you have said that sometimes it some takes people, much one longer. Hour, yeah. one, well, I know some people that have told me that, you know, one hour, they're still... You know, yes, they're still at it. Like it's not even enough for mm -hmm, the child. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I mean, and then we know that we alternate. You know, one, if the baby has you know suckled on one side of the breast for about twenty minutes, fifteen minutes, sometimes you may want to change. If, for, for instance, for the for the friend you mentioned, she may need to alternate from time to time. So the baby has suckled on this breast for such a long time, and it still feels as if you feel that the baby hasn't had enough move to the other breast and the baby is done on the other one and you feel that ah, this child is still hungry which is unlikely yeah. move again you know so you can always go back and forth so be aware of when i mean there's ba some babies mark their mouth when they are you know some some have a certain some Manarism. they all have different mannerisms the some is smart the first um few days the way i my own awareness now was to watch the baby mm -hmm. and I breastfed on demand, then I now started like, doing a tracking mm. routine so that I don't now breastfeed only when he's hungry. Because I, and to ease my own stress of, oh, is he getting enough? Yeah. I pump. So I will pump and empty one breast to see how much yeah. it is mm. and try to match it with what they naturally say, oh, a two week old baby should take three ounces of this. So mm -hmm. I'm I, I gauge it like okay so in if I breastfeed I'll get like a whole 120 ml bottle or something if I breastfeed one breast mm -hmm. you know so I'll, I'll be able to gauge that okay if I breastfeed for like 10 and sometimes the, the baby's um, sucking is harder than it's faster than the pump mm -hmm. so I'll be able to say okay if it stays for 10 minutes that should be enough that was the way of me trying to be aware of so I come to see the content of maybe one breast and you notice that maybe one is not as much as the yes, other one. Yes. Then I now start tracking. So normally you will wake up yourself to be hungry. So before then I already know that oh by two o'clock I should bre breastfeed this child because mm -hmm. if it's, if I stay another five, ten minutes, he will be so I will try and wake him up even if he's sleeping to breastfeed mm -hmm. so that he would not wake up hungry. Yeah. And so be that cranky. was my own way of being aware. So track. Yeah. And now that you mentioned the tracking, I remember that you once mentioned um, the app. The breast, you know, yes. We have different apps Breast these apps. days. So we have the breastfeeding apps, the ones that would remind you or, or um, notify you yes. that it's yes. time for the baby yes. to take the yes. next feed. So that's another way of helping to be aware of um, and what to feed your baby on time yes. and not to just wait till the baby is hungry. Yes. Um, and then that also takes me to knowing where still in um, uh, on our topic of being uh, on, on yes of, of being aware to know when your baby is really taking enough and and for mothers who are concerned that their babies may not be taking enough what are the signs that we look out for you know um, is the baby making enough urine the diaper how often do you change the diaper because you would know, you know, if, if you've had a child who's been eating well enough, you know how many times you change the diaper. You know, and then luckily there are some diapers these days. You don't even need to open up. They have the yes. indicators. Yes. They have the indicators. They change color. There's a line that will change yes. color yes. when you know when the baby has um, weed. And has the baby st uh, passed through? How many times has the baby passed mm -hmm. through? And then that's another thing that I remember now. A baby, which is also a benefit, a baby who exclusively breastfeeds has, a, has less smelly poo. <laughs> I mean, for me, I think that's another. Because it's always a shocker when you, know, when you start giving other feeds. And then you just... Like, ah, yeah. <laughs> you don't realize it until you change the meals. And yeah. then you ah, it's more smelly. The, the, the consistency is different. <laughs> is, uh, yeah. so, so that's another advantage, you know, of exclusively breastfeeding. So we digress. We go back. So the stool, is the baby making stool? Is the baby dehydrated? Because you know that um, fluid is one of, the constant, one of the major constituents of breast milk. If the baby is constantly dehydrated, 
uh, how do you know a baby is red? You look at the leaves, are the leaves charred? Is the eyes sunken? But th those are very bad signs. The skin, the elasticity of the skin, how... But before you get there, you already see. Mm -hmm. If the baby is dehydrated and inconsolable, this baby is just crying. Mm -hmm. It's not receiving, you know, enough food, then you know that, yeah, there is a problem the here. Problem. This baby is really not getting enough. And like Tommy said, you may also want to express to see how much you're actually getting. So it helps to gauge, you know. Yeah. So those are some of the things that you do as well, being aware in terms of ABCs of breastfeeding. And another thing, the tools, the tools, like main thing, the tools that you may need as a breastfeeding mother, especially if you're a working mother. If you have the opportunity or the advantage of taking your baby with you and having a, a nanny watch while you work, and that means if you have an office scratch, yes, good for you. So you may be able to breastfeed, go in and out of the office scratch from time to time to breastfeed. In that case, you may not need to express, you may still need to express, depending on how flexible your work is. So, and in that case, you have to be conscious of the type of clothes you wear. Even for all breastfeeding mothers, whether you are working, a working mom or you are a stay-at-home mom for that period, you have to totally, I mean, your wardrobe changes. Then that's when you know that, okay, there are different types of clothes. You, you, are, you, beginning, you are beginning to look for... Um, for example, I am not breastfeeding compliant. <laughs> I am so breastfeeding compliant. Exactly. So you look for button clothes in front, wrap tops or wrap blouses, yes. um, shirts you yes. know and, and there are a lot of trendy things that people can wear that people use these days and then we also have the breastfeeding covers yes which for me was my number one tool because i had to carry my baby everywhere wow. and i always had my my breastfeeding cover right. cloth a trendy one that so many diseases in fact recently i saw a lady make them um, the ankara one so we'll put the links of where you can get all of these tools for for people that live in not in Nigeria but mostly for people that live in Nigeria. So, so that's that for the breastfeeding club. And then you also have um, some type of underwear, even if it's just a camisole you have. Yes. If you put the regular blouse, you can have a camisole worn under it. And so that when it's time for you to breastfeed, you can just pull off of your blouse and then the rest of your body is covered. Covered, yes. And then yes, that camisole, yes, it's yes. that's from here like this. Yes. Yes. And then you just, you know, the rest of your body is covered, you just put it inside and you're not, a, you're not, you know, too conscious of yourself. Yes. Yes. And then it also brings us to the type of bras that you know, women can wear. We have um, the breastfeeding bras, some of them, they have clamps. Yes. You can easily have a clamp. You know, um, because the baby grows and if you want to continue to, uh, after six months, after one year, eventually, you know, the baby, the breast begins to, because the demand is not as much, so it's not as good as it used to be, and then you can easily ease back to your normal mm -hmm. rights, even though you're still breastfeeding, yes. if it's convenient for you. So those are some of the tools that we will talk about, and we've talked about A, in terms of awareness. Now B, be patient. We talked extensively in our previous video about um, how long it will take for you to establish yes. lactation. Mm -hmm. Now, beyond lactation, when you establish lactation, knowing that you may be at it for the next one hour, please be patient. Support the time that you have with your baby. Look into your baby's eyes. Hold their hands, you know. For me, my, I used to like to just hold their tiny finger while they are breastfeeding, just look into their eyes. Don't try not to use that time to be feeling through your phone. That, that may just be your own minute of quietness. If you have to do something on your phone, do it, but don't let that be the modus operandi. That time can be used for you to internalize, to you know, to just take a pause for the day, you know, mm -hmm. or for the moment. Help speak to the child, engage the child. You know, they listen, they hear, and all this emotional or this communication helps to build them emotionally and even mentally. Yeah. So 
spend that time, sing to them, talk to them, pray for them, whatever. If you're just staring into their eyes and they're staring back at you, please do that. But before you know it, oh, they grow and they're all over exploring the world. And then you're like, how did time go so fast? I know that the first one year of um, a baby's life is the most, uh, you do a lot of work and it looks like, and it, it, it drags, it looks like the longest time. Then before you know it, it's just gone and you look like, where did all the time go? Why did my baby grow so fast? So please have all the time that you have been patient. And that brings us to see, be comfortable. We also talked about this before when we were talking about challenges of breastfeeding. You, you have to be comfortable while breastfeeding. Make sure you get good seats. If you have to have a rocking chair, you can have one made open. I remember I wanted to buy one from one brand like that. It was really nice. It had a case where you could put your feet, rest your back. You can, um, what's it called? Rock? Yes, yeah. you can rock. So I really, really liked it. But when it came to, when I saw the amount that it cost me, I had one made locally, a very nice one, well cushioned. And it did the job. Yeah. So if you can afford to have a rocking chair, you sometimes you feel just get it off the internet. If you have a good carpenter, let them do it. If you that but you should have made plans for that before the baby comes. It's better so yes. that you start using it from the get go. If you don't have a rocking chair, just get a tiny comfortable chair where you can rest your back. back. Because that is very important. If your back is if you don't rest your back, yeah. Well, I'll tell you what you have back pain. Back pain. And, and, and it can really, really um, interfere and um, discourage the students who have to think that, oh, yeah, it's time to press me again, my back, my back. And most of the people that get the epidural, it's, oh, really? Yes, I had the, the back pain for almost a year. Hmm. So that spot, like where you get the injection for the anesthetic, hmm. it was painful. So if you're not, if you are also not resting your back or being comfortable yes. when you are breastfeeding, it can also affect the last and compound it with that as well. Yes. Uh, it's not, it's not nice. It's really not nice. I had a lot of that pain. So, so. so please, mothers, be comfortable. If you have to get, have lift your feet, please lift your feet. And you know we have that the, the pregnancy pillows, pregnancy pillows, the pillows, pillows, and the, pillows, pillows the pregnancy pillows, pillows can drop as out. the yes, yes to help the child position the child well so that you're not slouching. That's another thing. You're not slouching to the baby. You should bring the baby okay. to you. And that takes us back to the breastfeeding positions we mentioned yes. before. We talked about the, the cradle position, lift the baby up to you, or the football position. You still take the baby, bring the baby to the breast. You don't take the breast to you. Bring the baby to the breast. And then the third one, the lying position. So all those things to also help to ensure that the baby latches well and you're both comfortable so that any I mean, mother is happy, the baby is happy. The goal is to breastfeed the baby, make sure the baby is getting all the nutrients. And we will say it again, if you are unable to breastfeed exclusively, breastfeed anyway. Okay, it's the best, the best is to exclusively breastfeed. But if you can't exclusively breastfeed, if you have to breastfeed at night, if you have certain hours of the day that you can breastfeed and you are still giving other things, please, it's better you breastfeed than not breastfeed yeah, at all. Yeah. And then if you still cannot breastfeed for any reason, you know, having said all this, please know that your baby will not come to harm. Still, your baby will develop well as well, but you need to, your hygiene has to be on point. It really has to be on point so that you don't, so the baby is not exposed to infections in and out of the hospital, which is not even good for the mother. For the mother's yes. self. Because yeah. you're going through, you have a lot to do already. Now, the hospital admissions, there are no small, there are no small fries, right? And, mm -hmm. and uh, apart from the mental stress, the economical stress as well. Yes. Yes. Healthcare Nigeria. Yes. So, cheap. so please, please, we are not discouraging mothers. So we are not putting down mothers who are unable, unable to breastfeed. But we also want to encourage you to not see that because there are alternatives that should be an easy way out. No, yes. you should never take the easy way out. Because on the long run, I mean, the benefits are. Mm -hmm. So today we have talked about 
tools that you can use and the ABCs of breastfeeding. So ABC, the ABC awareness, for the tools work for awareness, we have apps that you can use to track your baby's feed, your baby's um, diaper change, that's in the, so we'll put the links of the apps that you can use and um, that's for awareness, apps, then breast pumps also, mm. you can check, you can you can check for um, how much you have, how much breast you're producing. So breast pump can help with that as well. And for also for working mothers or people that cannot be physically with their baby 24 hours of the whole day. So breast pumps can help you to also ex express and feed your baby. Then we talked about be patient. Patience, the tool you need for patience yourself, your mind. <laughs> you need, your mind has to be right, your mind has to be on point, the right tools you need for patience, just be patient. <laughs> and I like the thing we talked about with patients is that you shouldn't be too, when you are breastfeeding, it's not, we encourage you not to just pick up your phone and just keep scrolling, it's a time for you to relax and bond with your baby talk to your baby, sing to your baby, pray, for, pray your for your baby, whatever it is, look into their eyes, bond with them because it's so good for a shepherd. So, um, bond with your baby and see comfort. Get a rocking chair. You can also use your pregnancy pillow to double for your breastfeeding pillows to be able to, you know, breastfeed properly. Bring the baby to you, not you to the baby and be comfortable anything that will make you comfortable pillows a good chair make sure you rest your back back ache no we don't mm -hmm. want back aches no. yes so those are tools and we we'll put in links or or put in tags of everything that we, we talk about where you can find them you know basically we shall make sure that we put all the resources down everywhere, <laughs> anywhere. We'll put it. So it's important for us to remember to do what? What should you remember to do? Breastfeed. Breastfeed. Breastfeed.